Hello, everyone, and welcome to the School of Radiance podcast. I'm beyond excited that you are here. I'm happy you're here. And in today's class, this is going to be a little bit of like a bite sized segment on serums what to do and what not to do, and what you need to know. And this question was prompted during a recent one on one consultation. If you haven't yet booked your one-on-one with me, I'm not going to be offering these forever. I am going to be pulling back on my availability. So either number one, they're not going to be available very soon, or number two, the price is going to uh, be elevated to uh, reflect the information that I share, which is a very high level. Now, the whole thing with serums is you've gone online, you've seen people use their serums and all of that fun stuff. And What's been really trendy actually over the last few years is people taking their serum dropper and then basically touching their skin with the end of the dropper to like put this line of serum on the skin and then you see it drip down. Now the problem with that is number one, that's an inefficient way to apply your serum. And number two, that's actually going to contaminate your serum dropper because, you know, as a nurse, I understand aseptic technique, assisted with surgeries and all sorts of things. And when I do certain procedures, they need to be done uh, sterile or as clean as possible. And obviously your serum container is not a sterile container, but we want to keep it clean so that we don't have microbes contaminating different things from your skin into that bottle that is probably going to be used within two to three months, sometimes a little bit longer. You don't want to be introducing anything on your skin into that bottle and uh, potentially like growing stuff in it. And then you keep putting it on your skin. You're not going to be getting the best results. So the trendy thing about taking your dropper out of your serum bottle and then kind of gliding it on your skin and depressing the dropper as you go along. And then it's, it, flows downwards and then you rub it in totally inefficient what you want to do is not contaminate your antioxidant serum and what is an antioxidant serum an antioxidant serum actually helps to provide different things onto your skin that are going to be assisting your skin's nutrient needs also antioxidants they help to kind of pick up and get take they take care of some of the free radical damage that can slip through your sunscreen because the sunscreen is not a block it is a screen the word sunblock is a misnomer you've probably heard me say that before so the way that you the the rationale rather for desiring to add a serum is to boost your skin's free radical protection and number two it can also help with hydration So say, for example, you have a little bit more dry skin, actually adding an antioxidant serum might just give your skin a little bit of extra hydration, which can feel really good. And your skin will look more glassy and plump and hydrated and all that good stuff, which looks more youthful. Number three, an antioxidant serum or a serum of some sort can help to focus on reducing things like pigmentation or skin redness, or breakouts, or fine lines and wrinkles. I have a number of different serums on my skin shop, which you can find over at theschoolofradiance.com. Oftentimes, though, for the best results, you do want that one-on-one guidance. I just finished a completed a lovely one-on-one for Lily. She's in her 30s, and is just really wanting to take care of fine lines, wrinkles, and things like that, and just kind of get ahead of the aging process, which really starts to happen in the 30s and then really kicks into high gear around perimenopause and also menopause. So the earlier you start to incorporate more advanced things like adding an antioxidant serum into the mix, that's going to, uh, you're, you're going to be happy you did that uh, now. And it's never too late. You're never too old. You're never too old to care for the largest organ of your body. You're always worth it. Keeping that positive spin on proactively aging is a very healthy framework to operate in. Not like, oh gosh, getting some more fine lines and wrinkles. What am I going to do about it? Well, ring up Rachel Marga and uh, I'll help you out. But you also want to be using products that are targeted to your specific needs. So adding hydration, assisting with antioxidants, gobbling up free radicals that 
form from everything, anything and everything these days, from wireless cellular radiation and EMFs. There's actually PubMed studies that notice that EMF exposure can result in skin redness and irritation. I think that's due to a more downstream impact from the impacts on the red blood cells and your oxygen not oxygenating your vital organs as well because your red blood cells are sticking together. Also from UV light and LED lights. This is another form of light radiation that can damage the skin, but also heat, also extreme cold, extreme heat can be also damaging to the skin too. So just some interesting nuances there. We got the aging process. We also have our environmental things, not to mention air quality and pollution in the air. Most of the body's heavy metal exposure actually comes from the air, from industrial processes, from emissions. Uh, I don't think it's all the cows. <laughs> just a little joke, a little little fun aside there. And so we, we do get exposed to things. Also, if you're going into different shops or right now for me in renovation, there's VOCs in volatile organic compounds. And even if you're cooking with say bad oils, like you're still cooking with vegetable oil, you need to stop that. Switch to grass fed butter, switch to ghee or avocado oil. Those are going to be some of the best cooking oils because the smoke that can be emitted when these more rancid oils like canola oil and other seed oils are cooked and brought to a higher temperature, they can actually become a free radical and a toxin in your environment. So what do you wanna do? Purify your air and an antioxidant serum can again help with gobbling up the free radicals that can get formed when there's damage to the skin and free radical damage, how it damages the skin is it actually can create disruptions in your DNA processes and your skin cellular repair, either creating DNA damage or impairing the cellular function. Those are a couple of things that can happen. So that's what antioxidants do. They bind to free radicals because at the end of the day, what we want are our cells to be operating in a specific way, in a healthy way reducing oxidative stress at every turn. That's why even taking internal antioxidants are really key. NAC, Q citrine, zinc, vitamin C. There's all sorts of different cofactors and antioxidants that we can consume daily. And omega, collagen, antioxidants, and protein are really, really, really important. And also your key vitamins and minerals like zinc and manganese and iron and all of those different vitamins they help our cells operate better and kind of are functioning as uh, supplying those nutritional needs. And disease often happens, and uh, there's actually some research on autoimmune stuff, that that can stem from a nutrient deficiency. So if your skin is nutrient deficient, you're not going to have the best skin. The way that you apply a serum in your routine is also nuanced. You want to cleanse first in the AM, then you want to do your eye cream, then your antioxidant serum, your moisturizer, sunscreen, and then carry on with your makeup. I know that that sounds like a lot, but if you do have a cleanser, if you do have an eye cream, an antioxidant serum, a moisturizer, and sunscreen, that is a solid basic routine. That's basically more of like an essential routine, especially for feeding and hydrating the skin and to give your skin the best possible option to be more youthful uh, for as long as possible and also target the things you might want to be targeting that I mentioned before. Yes, you can use a serum in the PM as well. That might be more like a retinol, actually. You don't typically need to use an antioxidant serum at nighttime because the whole purpose is to gobble up free radicals from your daily exposure. I'd much rather you use a retinol or a peel or do your dermal rolling in the PM. Now, what's really tricky for me to do is during a one-on-one -on -one or during a, a podcast recording here is to show you how to do everything and anything because I would probably be washing my face and putting my products on and doing my dermal rolling like four to five times a day. If you like to learn how to actually make sure you're using your products 
in a way that's going to be the best use of your time and money and also get you the results that you're hoping for. I teach those tutorials exclusively in my tutorials, which are happening now. They're always seasonally specific over at the school of radiance.com. There's a lot of nuances with applying your products. And also when you're applying your serums, you're not putting it on the dropper on your skin, you're putting it in the palm of your hand. Okay. Palm it. This is what I like to talk about is palm your products onto your face. None of this, you know, putting the products in your palm and taking a couple fingers and then dabbing into the product and then dabbing it onto the face and then rubbing it in. That's a waste of time. Not to mention when you're applying your products with your hands, your fingertips and your palms, you're supporting lymphatic drainage, you're supporting blood flow, and you're just going to get the best application of the products in that regard as well. So that was a great question that I received recently from a beautiful one-on-one -on -one client of mine. What about serums? You know, should I be applying it with the dropper on my skin or should I be applying it into my hands? It's a resounding, apply it into your hands. Uh, just a little update here. Thank you so much, Kelly, for joining the membership today. You have some special bonuses coming your way. And for me to continue to show up here, and provide all of this incredible free content that I know is helpful, it's positive, it's inspiring, it's high level. As many of you know, I teach other doctors and nurses and am sought after by the biggest manufacturers of rejuvenation technology and products in the world to teach internationally. For me to continue to show up, it just means the world for you all who listen and are gaining value to show that reciprocity back, whether it's purchasing products, booking the one-on-ones while you can, joining my tutorials and joining the membership. I'm fully here to support you and have been doing so diligently and with passion and with love and through service since about 2017 online here. And it's just important for you to know that a lot of the free stuff that you get online, say for example, on YouTube or social media from a lot of these beauty influencers, isn't necessarily the best information. Oftentimes you're going to actually get the, the better information when you invest a little bit more of your time and money to receive information from someone who isn't just a beauty influencer, you know, promoting toxic products that you can get from CVS and Sephora and all sorts of stuff, Amazon, please don't buy your products, anything you put on or in your body from these third-party auction websites because of the concern of counterfeit products. So the School of Radiance is really the place to be to help you both look and feel your best. And the other thing here is your skin concerns isn't going to be solved with a serum. It's not going to be solved with one thing. It's typically going to be a combination of a few things and with some time to truly allow your skin cells and your cells of your body in general to be operating in a higher way with the nutrients that they need with reducing oxidative stress with your home care, AM and PM, and really kind of not just doing the essentials, but adding those more key advanced layers to really actually allow you to do less in the clinic. I'll just be totally honest with you. However, the in-clinic stuff still does serve a purpose. And in my research on optimal outcomes and really highlighting the importance for safety with the rejuvenation world, whether that's lasers, whether that's injectables or surgery, is to really put your health first and foremost. So just a little PSA, I just did a consult now, for a couple of people recently who are dealing with some health stuff, you really want to focus on the health things first. And you need to realize that doing rejuvenation, whether it's injectables or lasers or surgery, it's going to require some recovery. And if your body's already struggling to recover, you're not sleeping great, your energy is a little bit off, your recall and ability to form coherent sentences and problem solve and resolve conflict. If those are challenging for you, I would say rejuvenation isn't quite the time to do that because the body is under different stresses, whether it's physically, energetically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, 
all of those things can really impact actually what's called your HRV, which is your heart rate variability. And there's different ways to track your HRV, which I do like to suggest actually doing at some point in your life, whether that's through a tracker like the Aura Ring on airplane mode, always turn that Bluetooth off, dock your ring, then check your data, or with something like the Eight Sleep, which I love to sleep on, which is basically temperature regulating my sleep. Uh, so it's optimized at different sleep stages and also tracking things like my heart rate, like my heart rate variability. And the heart rate variability is a really key metric. And I had fillers a couple of years ago, feeling really great, all that good stuff. And my heart rate variability, my HRV tanked. And so this really actually highlighted to myself as a practitioner, as a researcher, as an instructor, an educator, that, you know, this rejuvenation stuff, it does impact stress on the body. It can lead to oxidative stress in some regard because you're doing something that's going to require a little bit of healing, even if it's a non-surgical, quote unquote, non-invasive type of thing. Anything you do to re for rejuvenation in the clinic, you want to make sure that you're feeling really good and happy to share that I'm sharing this information and publishing information on this to really help reduce things from not coming out so good or people having issues after rejuvenation. Um, it's, it's all about safety in my opinion. And then for you, it's about being a more conscious consumer. So that's what serums do. They're antioxidants. They can help you address specific targeted concerns. They can really enhance your body's protection from free radicals in the environment. Do not put the dropper on your skin and apply it in the way that you're seeing in social media, in trendy ads, in different influencers showing you how to you know, apply your products. Totally inefficient, waste of time, probably going to contaminate your serum vial as well. So palm it, put a couple of drops of that serum in your hand and you're using enough of that product to basically provide the slip and coverage that you need on your face, on your neck, on your chest, and put your leftover products actually on your hands as well. That's another great little tip there. Feel free to reach out anytime you have any questions, info at theschoolofradiance.com. If you're not sure about which way to start, you know, one-on-one -on -one tutorials, membership, which products, I warmly invite you while you still can to actually book a call with me. It's a quick 15 minute call and I'll give you clarity as to which avenues are going to be the most supportive for you on your journey of both looking and feeling your best. I can do all the rejuvenation in the world on somebody. They can spend thousands of dollars with me months at a time, but if their health isn't on point, if their oxidative stress status is elevated, they're actually not going to get as good results as someone who's a more well-balanced, mature individual who's paying equal attention on health. And, you know, it's okay for you to feel like, oh, you know, I feel good, but I feel like the way that I look isn't reflective of that or vice versa. I'm not feeling so good, not vice versa, but in addition to I'm not feeling so good and I feel like my skin's starting to show it. We want to get to the underlying root causes as to what's happening. And you've heard me mention this probably a couple of times now. My favorite F words is faith, family, fun, fitness, fitness, freedom, and finances. These are some of the key six, actually. I, I would determinants of health. It's a bit of a, an addition to, especially with the fun part. And the finance, well, all that stuff is actually really kind of part and parcel with the key determinants of health. I just kind of put a fun little cheeky spin on it to help you remember that, that if there's skin stuff, you're just kind of noticing signs of aging, what's going on in your life? What's the toxicity levels like both physical and non-physical? How are you doing? Are you living in peace or are you stressed out over this, that, and the other thing? All of these things, living in peace is really key. And also what's going to give you more peace is knowing that you have the right guidance, that you aren't just doing what's trendy. You aren't just taking these trendy beauty pills or using this trendy thing that you sleep with on your face or the red light therapy face masks. If anybody in the biohacking and beauty space should be talking about red light face masks, 
it would be me and I don't. I recommend the full panels. I just think they're better use of your time and money and you're not going to look like a stormtrooper to your significant other or potentially slightly scare small children. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to look too funny. We will already look a bit funny enough with our earplugs, with our eye mask, with our heatless hair curlers and wrapped up in our EMF bedding or EMF uh, silver threaded hoodie rather. I think that's enough. You know, add the stormtrooper on top of that, the, the little patches you can put on your face for fine lines and wrinkles. I, that's, that's getting a little overboard there. So again, don't be extreme with anything. Stay balanced, stay grounded, stay on point, become a more conscious consumer and having the intentionality with how you use your products, what products you're using is also going to translate into intentionality in other aspects of your life as well. And I'm grateful that you're here and you're getting this information. You are well on your way. You are on the right track to stepping into this beautiful version of yourself. The world desperately needs, you know, this balance of good, light, dark, all that stuff. We need the balance and you're here. You're helping to bring that balance. So I tip my hat to you and from my whole heart, grateful you're here. Thank you so much. For those of you who have supported me over these many years, and I do wish to continue this. Uh, so for those of you, you know, who are in the back, who haven't yet uh, reciprocated with some way or another of supporting me behind the scenes too, with your products, one-on-one -on -one tutorials and membership, uh, it means more than you know because it does take quite a bit to show up here and continue to deliver really high value content, answer your questions and all of that. So I love you all so much. Have a great day. Do something that supports those six F words. And I'll see you again right here on the School of Radiance podcast.